God is really good. is fitting when we come to this conference, the continuing quest for the historical Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, his teachings, his wisdom, his life, his work. And here we're gathered to remember, commemorate the great contributions to scholarship of Professor David Flusser, Dr. Robert Lindsay, Professor Shmuel Safra'i, and it is such an honor for me as a former student to be able to come and share with you. And uh, we're going to be looking at a very serious issue in biblical studies, New Testament research. Why is rabbinic literature pertinent to New Testament studies? Today, there are probably a lot of people who would argue that rabbinic literature really is not relevant. And they have you know, several reasons that they uh, use on different occasions. One that I often hear is really that they just don't want Jesus to be too Jewish. Uh, it's all right for him to be you know, from Palestine and to have been born in Bethlehem. But they would really rather him be more of a Catholic Jew or a Baptist Jew. And it's hard for them to really uh, compare Jesus with uh, the Jewish people at that time. Another reason they do not want Jesus to be a rabbi teacher or an interpreter of Torah. Uh, yesterday as we were studying uh, this theme of the Baal's above controversy, I couldn't help but note this statement that was made by a very famous biblical scholar, Martin Hingle, when he declared, quite certainly, Jesus was not a teacher comparable with the later rabbinic experts in the law. Now, this is really a tendency within a lot of writings in the New Testament. I think one of the uh, third reason, I'm just going to talk about three reasons uh, here in my opening remarks, uh, is that often they claim that the rabbinic literature is too late. It's written at a later time and therefore is not relevant for New Testament studies. I'm going to be talking about this today, the dating of rabbinic literature and some of the reasons why I believe that rabbinic literature can be very beneficial in our study of the historical Jesus and our examination of early Christianity and really throughout the New Testament. I can only say here briefly that I think there's a lot of inconsistencies here in New Testament studies. I don't know, I had to smile last night as uh, Halver Ronin or Yochanan Ronen, his uh, Hebrew name, uh, made the comment that scholars are very quick to study the Gospel of Thomas, and now you know we have the National Geographical Society spending an enormous amount of money to obtain, translate, and publish this Gospel of Judas, documents written in Coptic from Egypt. And I thought his comment was kind of interesting. We've got the doubter and the traitor Gospel, and we're going to use those, um, all, both of which would have been written you know, closer to the time of some of the rabbinic literature and probably much later than some of the rabbinic texts that we'll be studying today. And this is kind of a debate that rages in New Testament scholarship. We have uh, some very leading prominent scholars, say like E.P. Sanders or James Charlesworth, that are using uh, the rabbinic literature. We have other uh, scholars that criticize this. There's kind of a group that say, well, the only... Uh, text, the only date that we can give to the text is the actual time that it was written, and we can't think of it preserving any earlier material. What we cannot show, we cannot know is sometimes used. In other words, if I can't prove you the copyright date of when something is written and connect it before 30, well, obviously it can't be used to study Jesus. You know, even with these three reasons, I think that probably one of the uh, major reasons that this is a question for a lot of people is this reluctance to acknowledge and embrace the family heritage of Jesus and to recognize the historical background where Jesus is among his people. 